In South Texas, they grow cactus and kids. Some think the cactus has all the luck. All it really has to do is stand there. The kids go to school. Houses used to be little and red. Now they look a lot more like this. The times have changed. The needs have changed. And that's the reason behind this school. The United Consolidated Independent High School, built in the flatlands out of Laredo. A new and very different school. And not all those differences meet the eye. County, Texas, a very large place. Some of these students have to travel 50, 60, even 100 miles just to get to school. This one school district alone is 400 square miles, larger than the whole state of Delaware. But it isn't the newness or size of the district that makes this new school unique. It lies in something the school board decided to do. We as a board had previously promised the people of our community that we would build as good or better school than any of our neighboring schools. This was one of our campaign promises when we consolidated that if the people would back us, we would in turn give them the best schools we knew how. The board, after we had arrived at more or less what kind of a building we wanted, contacted several architectural firms and finally settled upon the Y.C. see Hedrick firm out of Houston. What they wanted was something extra. Protection for their children from nuclear fallout. Berlin and Cuba, they'd left their marks behind. Most people forgot them the moment the crises ended, but not these people. Joe Finley, the board's president. John Hart, the treasurer. Otto Kruger. Mr. and Mrs. John Martin. Superintendent Brantley, Mrs. Gutierrez, Mr. Cruz Ayedo. We had long meetings with the architect and some heated discussions at times, but I believe that the contractor finally saw what we were after, the protection of the child, good facilities without sacrificing anything. The board told them that they wanted fallout protection for enough people so that it would allow the entire student body to come in, plus their parents and the staff of the school and the local community right around the school. We did have opposition from one or two families in our district. At first, we were a little bit leery in spending this money and going underground. We didn't know what the thoughts of the community would be, so we went around and we discussed it with different people, and they seemed to be in accord. Discussion, debates, questions about costs and answers, all motivated by one central purpose. Our thought behind it was that if we save one child with the expense we were making, it would be worth every cent we spent. The job was now up to the architect, Leo Dossi. At that time, we had no idea. I had no idea just what that concept would be, except that I knew that it had to be an economical approach. It was new to all of them, both the idea of the protected school and the problems to be faced in its building. But the school board had two people spurring them on, Treasurer John Art, for one. He and Mr. Joe Fenley, the president of the board, had attended fallout seminars in Laredo, and they had become very interested in the subject, and they were sold on the idea. Even the architects had to go back to school to learn the technical background needed. I consulted with the Office of Civil Defense, and we had three of our men that took this fallout course that was sponsored by the government, and I've had the course. The building that finally came out of all this was essentially a two-story structural design, but with the lower floor below grade. 
This part was to serve as both schoolroom and shelter. Each classroom here is air-conditioned, fully equipped, and built to serve a double function. To be a normal classroom in normal times, a shelter in time of need. Each one has the latest equipment that modern teaching methods require. The library, too, is underground. There's a completely equipped kitchen and cafeteria. Upstairs, above grade, went the building trades and woodcrafts. The designers put the gymnasium there, too. And the auditorium as well. The natural center for many of the school's activities. questions. We're all accustomed to being closed in, in offices, subways, bargain basements. But mention the word shelter, and we start worrying about windows. How would the children react to an underground school? When we were planning this building, and it was with the architects, we were very conscious that the thing must not have a depressing effect on the children. They must not have the feeling they were going into a hole. You don't have any feeling of claustrophobia or anything like that. It's just like being in a regular school without any windows. There's just no outside distraction. These students seem to forget where they are once they have come down here, possibly because of the plants and the mirrors around. There are no students daydreaming off about five miles out there in the sky somewhere where there's no windows to look out of. It usually keeps their attention on what they're teaching. It's just like this. You don't normally feel any different when you walk into a commercial building downtown somewhere. If you go into a dry goods store, for instance, they've generally got the bargain basement or something on the lower floor level. Well, you go downstairs into the basement, do you ever think or do you ever realize that you're actually downstairs in a basement? It's never affected me that way. They cut up and act just as normal children do everywhere. And the fair fact that they do cut up makes the students seem as though they were without any thought of it. If they did have any inhibition or a feeling of depression, I think they would show it in many ways, but I have seen no signs of it. My son Tommy was a daydreamer, and he used to look out windows all the time, and he can't do that anymore, and I think it's improved some of his work. The school itself is so beautiful, and it's so unusual. It has the morale of the kids so high that I have noticed that my girls' grades have gone up they feel as so though they have to live up to the school, that's all. The problem was how to open up a closed-in place and make it seem like the wide-open spaces. They did it with light, good lighting wherever the student went, with growing plants and the student's artwork in the corridors, with mirrors placed at all the turns so the hallways seemed to stretch out forever. We continuously want to impress upon the student that life is about him at all times. The teachers found an unexpected bonus in all these walls without windows. A homemaking teacher needs a lot of space for instructional material. And I have, I would say, the four walls just to display all the material. The effect on schoolwork was surprising, too. Since I've been at the new school, my grades have come up from B and C student to A's and B's. I don't think they ever consider the fact that they're actually underground. I do know that occasionally they come home and say, oh, did it rain today or did it blow? That's about the only reaction I get out of them.
Every child who enters here is shielded by a 14-inch concrete slab, a ceiling for these underground classrooms, a floor for the part above. It's a normal thickness for any structure like this, not what architects refer to as over-designed, meaning extra money and materials have been poured in to suit a special purpose. But it serves the purpose very well. That slab gives the lower floor a fallout protection factor of 152, half again better than most community shelters. It brings another blessing, silence. In the library downstairs, you can concentrate on a book, while overhead... to feed and supply the whole community. This was a dual-use plan. If a crisis came, each below-grade room could go right on as a normal classroom to keep the children cheerful and busy. Or if needed, it would be switched at once to its emergency function as a dormitory, a nursery, or a hospital. Now, the one area which serves only one purpose is the area labeled the emergency food storage. In this area is housed the radiological equipment, the food, the medical kits, and other supplies furnished by the Office of Civil Defense of the federal government. This is the only area that we would not have had to build were we not incorporating fallout protection. Actually, the school board did add a couple of extras. They decided that beyond the normal air conditioning, heating, and sewage pumping units, two things were vital to the school as a shelter. The first, an emergency generator, triggered to cut in automatically, ensuring continuous light and power. The second, a well directly under the school. This reception room doubles as a place for educational counseling and serves as a communication center too. It's not only connected with each of the separate classrooms, but in emergency, this equipment would be the one communication with the outside world. Design, construction, generators, mirrors, they all cost money, maybe too much. The school board debated eliminating this or that. Their budget limit was $11 a square foot, and they knew they couldn't exceed it. But finally, they crossed their fingers and waited for the architect's report. Our total cost was about 1035, and that included site work. We also found that by putting this area below grade, we developed a tremendous insulating quality that reduced our air conditioning loading, our electrical loading, and thereby we were able to save money in that area too. And so Webb County has its school. The community has what it wanted, a fine modern school meeting its own special problems with bilingual teaching equipment needed here where 70% of the students originally spoke only Spanish. With a building trades and woodcraft shop, to give vocational training to those who go out to work, not to college. An active and attractive school with all the advantages plus one.
the knowledge that protection is always there or only a few feet away. The parents are quite relieved, I think, and are very impressed with the fact that it is a fallout shelter. I know this for sure. I can remember back when we had this Cuban crisis that there was a great deal of concern in our system about what we would do with the kiddos in case of an attack. We worked out a plan at that time, what we would do, but now this is all taken care of for us. The plan is no longer necessary. We're in the plan. Webb County's far off the beaten path, but visitors are beating one anyway, coming to see this brand new school, asking how it was done planning similar ones for their own hometowns. As a principal of a high school, it is, in most cases in Texas, or in South Texas, very difficult for schools to find qualified teachers by the time that school starts. However, it is not the case here. We have more teacher applications than we can possibly take care of. It's not only teachers who are interested and curious, so is everyone else. There are many contractors and people, our superintendents, school board members, that have come to our building to look at it, to get ideas. Even visiting ball teams take their eyes off the basket long enough to see what this new school is like. from the whole community to build this school as a shelter and it'll take the same thing to run it for shelters don't manage themselves plans have to be made people train for the job parents and teachers meet here in the cafeteria these rooms we need a person that is in charge of that room two of us are trained and prepared as shelter managers for this building and have been appointed by the school board and the local civil defense director as shelter managers for this building. Everybody in the neighborhood is in the plan. Parents, the children, the school staff, doctors, local officials. The shelter serves the whole community and it's big enough to shield them all. Where do you think you would best fit in this? Well, uh, I can uh, work with Mr. Bostick in, in communication. Uh, Mrs. Hudson, you're with recreation. recreation. Mrs. A school is many things. It's blackboards and backboards, books and bands, lockers and lunchrooms and labs, and something else. A part of it's you. All the things you've wished for your children. All the fears that something might cheat them of their chance before they've even had a chance to start. Like an accident caused by a careless driver or a foolish mistake by some enemy who thought he might win a nuclear war. Maybe neither will ever happen. Still, these are the things parents worry about and the things they try to prevent. That's what they have in mind in Webb County and that's why they built this school. <laughs> 